I'm here in Riverhead, New York, and behind me is the first 3D printed house to be sold on the open market, the New York MLS system to be specific. My name is Jared Gross, and I've been traveling the world to every 3D printed house I can find, and this is one I definitely wanted to see. SQ4D printed this house, and the printer is still here. We're gonna talk about the printer, how they printed it, what changed from their first house to their second house, and what makes this such a great project. This video is sponsored by Venture equipment but more on that later. To call this the first 3D printed house sold on the open market is slightly misleading because obviously it hasn't been completed yet. There are other 3D printed homes complete that have been sold but this home was sold first as land and a permit. I've got to say I really appreciate how sleek their track system looks. The other track systems I've seen are far bulkier. About a foot from the bottom there's a lighter colored layer with some what looks like dripping material coming out of it. This probably means that there wasn't a perfect seal between those two layers. The color changes are due to a variety of reasons, mostly because the house isn't printed all in one go. You can end up with different colors from material changes, changes in the environmental factors like humidity and temperature and many other subtle differences. Around the windows and doors, this house looks way more professional than their test unit in Calverton. Recognize this guy? That's Stephen King. He's the realtor that sold this house. We actually did a walkthrough of the other SQ4D house with him where he showed us around and described the benefits of 3D printing. They've really learned a lot since their last house. I see tons of improvements on this one that we'll get to in a sec. So you can see for this house they used studs for looks like two by six studs for the headers of the windows and framed out the window so they'll be easy to install despite the slight gap between the wood and the printed wall because the layers are a little bit uneven from this distance I actually don't see any cracking which is a really good sign for this house and the layers look much more even and consistent than they did in their first project which is to be expected, of course, they've learned a lot. You can see the porch there is printed at the base. This makes me think that they may have printed the foundation uh, to hold the concrete that they poured for the slab. From this angle, you can kind of see the track system their printer is built on. This was the first printer I've seen that used rails, so they were really early on to have this design. It seems kind of practical to be able to print in a whole row with an unlimited axis. It's cool that the printer is still standing here. When I was at the other project the first time, the printer was still there, but it wasn't assembled. This is the first time I'm seeing the SQ4D printer in its full form. I'd love to go inside, but it does say no trespassing, so I'm going to be respectful of this active construction site. I reached out to their Instagram page, but they didn't respond to me in time, so this will have to do for now. Hopefully in the future, I can come back and get inside, maybe with one of their founders, to do a proper tour. This apparatus they have covered is very intriguing to me. There's a water tank over there, which makes me think maybe they're mixing dry mortar with water on site uh, with this system on a trailer. I think that because I see at the end there they have uh, that tube that seems like concrete would flow out of it, kind of like it comes out of a concrete truck. This mobile solution might make it easier for SQ4D to do mixing and pumping uh, with their own custom equipment. I would really like to talk to them and learn more about this, especially since I can see the results behind me are looking really good. I'd also like to let you guys know that I'm going to be taking my video podcasts off of my YouTube channel. The podcast episodes will still all be available for free on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, all those platforms, but the videos are only going to be hosted on the Virtual Village on my website. This is because they were really only getting one or 2,000 views each and that was hurting my YouTube channel. The algorithm likes to see consistency, so by having these house tours on the channel and my podcast on Spotify and my website, it'll really keep things much more direct uh, it'll really keep things much more concentrated I'm sure a lot of you will be happy about that too because so many of my subscribers only choose to watch the house tours and not the podcast episodes just to remind you that still totally available to you for free on Spotify Apple Podcasts. the only thing that I'm changing is the videos which will only be available to virtual village members when I really zoom in you can almost see the pecs up here that they used for the plumbing. Maybe we'll get a closer look at that with the drone footage. I really like the American flag they put up top. What a nice touch. They also have some clever signs. Got some 
3D printer crossing over here. This sign is why I can't go behind this fence. I would really love to, and last time I went inside their site, they had contacted me, they were even happy about the video I did, but since my channel's grown a little bit, uh, I'm gonna make sure I can get permission before going across this fence. I really don't wanna upset anybody. I'm gonna put the drone in the sky and see what we can learn from above. I'm really glad that I have the drone because it gave me a unique perspective of this project without having to go and trespass on site. Good thing my drone has decent zoom feature, so we're able to get a better idea of what this project looks like. You can see some of the blue and red PEX plumbing in the building. PEX must be the most popular modern plumbing solution for residential needs. From above, you really get a much better idea of the space. It appears to have three bedrooms, two bathrooms, and ample living space with a built-in breakfast bar. On their last project, which was granted a demo unit, they left the walls completely exposed. I hope they choose to do that again this time, but it'll be interesting to see what design choices they make for the finishes. This home was sold to, I believe, a private individual, and so it might be up to them how the home is completed. One of the coolest parts about this printer is how it can actually fold up. When I first saw it, the pillars had been cut in half, basically. They bend at the middle, and a cable automatically lifts them into the upright position for printing. I'm pretty sure that when it comes to the size of a printer compared to how compact you can make it, this one takes the cake. At the moment, it seems like SQ4D is interested in the printing business rather than the selling printers business. This could be a temporary strategic decision so that they learn how to master the technology before selling it to other people rather than having their first customers be the guinea pigs. It's also very possible SQ4D isn't interested in ever selling printers. Icon doesn't sell printers. Apis Core is switching to a rental model. There are many companies that have different business models in this industry, so deciding which printer you want to work with depends not only on the technology, but also the terms that you require for use of the printer. I get contacted by people all the time who want to have a 3D printed house built. Some of them even volunteer free land for companies to experiment on, but there's simply not enough printers to go around. There are tons of people that need housing, but probably less than 100 of these printers around the world by now. So if we can scale up the quantity of printers available, we can scale up the number of projects. But I have to say, no complaints to me, there's been no shortage of 3D printed houses for me to go film. Keep up the great work, SQ4D. Ventures Equipment provides silo mixer pump solutions for your 3D printed concrete needs. Every printer needs a mixer pump, and if you're doing a big project like a building, you definitely want a silo so that you're not loading everything manually. Get in touch with Ventures Equipment and they'll show you how their equipment can increase your output and productivity. Get in touch with them at the link below. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and I'll catch you on the next one.